But uh, there are a number of cases, and it's very interesting, a number of very distinguished scientists, modern scientists, who believe all kinds of prognosis. For instance, Charles Richer, Nobel Prize for discovering allergy, the anaphylactic uh, shock, at uh, the beginning of the last century. He believed in parapsychology. Not only did he believe, he was the president of the French Association of Parapsychology. Then there was a famous uh, René Blondeau, a seasoned physicist, but distinguished himself in, in physics, and he believed that he had discovered the end race, a completely different kind of race. And uh, the Americans sent a very prestigious physicist, specialist in optics, who to check whether this was true or not. And if he did the trick without noticing, without Blondor noticing, he took out the prism that <coughs> Blondor had used in his spectrograph to show uh, that <coughs> the um, end rays refracted the same way as light waves. And he claimed that still the phenomenon occurred, although the apparatus was out of out of the orbit. And he believed in the existence of his end rays till the end of his life. Then there was, of course, Holday, one of the creators of the synthetic theory of evolution, and one of the distinguished geneticists and so on, who believed in Lysenko, the Trophim Lysenko, the charlatan prophecy of Stalin, a veralization process. And only the other day, Luc Montagnier, the discoverer of the HIV virus, he proclaimed his faith in homeopathy. And as you know, the homeopathy dilutions are so extreme that what you get is um, something like one molecule per galaxy. The density is so low that the chance of uh, such a molecule hitting your organism is practically vanished. Uh, and so there are a number of, of very distinguished scientists who fall for this or that nonsense. Another very fashionable nonsense is the it's from bits. It, material things, we learn, very distinguished American physicists claim, that it's just a bunch of bits of information units, zeros and ones. And once uh, I asked him, uh, tell me how many uh, bits are there in a hamburger? And so he started to calculate, and after two or three minutes he came up with a huge <laughs> What's the what's the evidence for it? There's no evidence that there can be no evidence because bits have no energy and energy is the characteristic of material things. The perception characteristic is a property, the universal property. All things, whether they are particles or radiation, they are out of energy. And so, how is it possible for an, an immaterial thing, a moral a symbol, like a zero or a one, to have physical properties? Well, it's similar to the Christian uh, myth of the transubstantiation. When, when a priest uh, drinks uh, wine, he is drinking the blood of Christ, and not symbolically, but actually, when he eats uh, a little bit here, the, the pizza of bread or whatever, he eats Christ's body, and so on. He believes that, all right, that's all right for a priest, for a priest. For, but for a scientist to believe that you can transmute a symbol into a material thing, it's, it's very hard. Uh, but it's novel, it's, uh, it's, not, it sounds very original, which it is, of course, but, uh, and it will shock many people, and so you get publicity for that. But maybe, maybe that is a bit, uh, these things have some similarity with the placebo effect. Really? The placebo? Oh, yeah, yeah. Placebo yeah. effect? In that, um, there's, uh, there's no direct physical connection, yet, yet the mechanisms are different that produce the result, but they're not unrelated. 
Yeah, they they actually may be just a symbol as long as the yeah. cognizing brain yeah, exactly. sees yeah. that symbol as yeah. meaning something, which in turn mobilizes yeah. other physical yeah. processes. Yeah, but you know the the original conception of the placebo effect was <clears throat> uh, an idealist one. And it was just a matter of belief. No, no, it really happens. This is now being investigated. The relation between <clears throat> The cortex and the subcortical systems. How the subcortical systems, in particular, the ones that control the, the immune system, uh, are connected. So that a signal coming from the cortex, cognition, let's say, to um, the immune system is really a physical symbol. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, if you get the bad news, uh, you are more predisposed to um, become ill or is it, if you are optimistic, you are more likely to recover from sickness and so on and so forth. It used to be believed that to be just uh, all, all women's uh, stories, but therefore we are. But um, in any case, the thing is that science or scientific investigation, though, uh, has a philosophical nucleus, and uh, if one of the elements of that nucleus is missing, then uh, scientific research may delay, maybe can lead uh, to scientific, as in the cases of the, of the <coughs> it's from this um, myth, in the case of the parallel universes, and in the people who sincerely believe in, in homeopathy and parapsychology and psychoanalysis and all that nonsense. So, this uh, mistake are uh, to believe that. Uh, a solid scientific experience immunizes you against charlatanism. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. So I think it will be interesting for scientists to get courses in methodology or in history of science, at least. But the trouble again is that so few philosophers are really conversant with the science. Uh, yeah, most of them don't know what science is. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I found just uh, recently <coughs> studying the problem of indicators. Uh, for instance, <coughs> uh, an atomic physicist that doesn't have direct access to atomic processes, he needs intermediates between the microphysical world and the macrophysical soul. <coughs> he needs, for instance, a bubble chamber, a Wilson chamber. Uh, and what he sees in the wisdom chamber are uh, little drops, droplets that have been formed or have been ionized by the process of a, an electrically charged particle such as an electron or a proton and so on. <clears throat> so he doesn't see the protons, he doesn't see the electrons, but he can see the droplets, he can see uh, the tracks left by the passage of that, that uh, electron or proton or cosmic electric and so on. And so, or you don't know that there is an electric current going through this, uh, <clears throat> this apparatus just by touching it, you get an electric shock. But you have uh, measurements, uh, we have apparatus, pieces of, of equipment that uh, measure the, uh, <clears throat> for instance, the magnetic field associated with electric currents and so this is how you, you can measure the intensity of the electric current and so on and so forth. But if you look at the right things in the science of most philosophers, you won't find even the word, uh, not, not even the concept of English.